can create time entries under the Time and Time Entry tab. This is also the default screen you will land on when you first log in. So let's start off with the calendar. By default, all time entries will be created on the current date, but you can change the date of the entry from this calendar view by selecting an alternative date. You can use the single arrow to toggle between months and you can use the double arrow to toggle between years. So let's say I'm creating a time entry for March 2019 or for the 20th. In the full field you'll be specifying the timekeeper that is creating the time entry. This field is only displayed if the user has access to create entries for all timekeepers. Next up, select the matter. If the matter belongs to a task to do, click on the plan task to do link above the calendar to pull all matter and plan task details from the task into the time entry fields. So for example, if I go ahead and click this, you can see that all the information relating to this plan task to do has been pre-filled, making it much easier and saving me a lot of time. Otherwise, if you do not want to pull a plan task to do, just go ahead and type in the matter or double click on the field for a drop down list of all accessible matters. Start typing or double click for a drop down list of all your task activity codes. If a plan task to do was selected which had a force task code enlisted in it, the user will not be allowed to edit this field. Billable type. So billable means the amount will be included in the invoice. Non-billable means the amount will not be included or appear on the invoice. It is in the background for reporting purposes. No charge means it will show on an invoice but with a zero dollar amount. It will appear as no charge written next to the time entry. Please note that the billable type drop down is only available for those timekeepers who have been granted permission by the firm admin. This can be set under account, timekeepers and then the specific usernames permissions tab. If the user cannot view this field, it means every time entry will be automatically follow the definitions made under the matter or task level. Hours or start timer. So if a user opts to start a timer, when you click on the save and new button, this will automatically begin the timer here and you can see at the top of the screen, you can see the timer here. You can pause the timer by either clicking down here at the clock here or you can click on the icon up here. The icon on the top bar will be available to view at anywhere on the time solve application no matter what screen you're on. So if you move into the invoices screen for example, you can see that the timer still is continuing on here. If I right click on the time, you can see here that the time entry details can also be pulled for a preview. Alternatively, it is possible that you can see a show stop and start time field in the place of this. This will only be visible if under the time and settings link you have enabled the show stop, stop time you can see here that I can select the start time and the stop time. I can select the start time, the stop time or I can simply just fill in the hours. And then we have the rate field which will typically show the timekeeper default rate unless a different type of rate has been chosen to be applied for this specific matter i.e. a task rate, a global rate or a matter specific rate. The ability to change the rate is available for administer users only and those timekeepers who have been granted specific permission by the firm admin under account, timekeepers and permissions tab. Or we can switch to fixed amount view and enter in a fixed amount. The fixed amount field is only available to those users that have appropriate permissions in place to enter a fixed fee. You can fill in any internal notes that are needed against this time entry that will be only visible within the firm. And then we have the description field. So if there was a task code selected, the description field will have been pre-filled with the task code details. 
Alternatively, you can enter in any description that you want. And these descriptions can appear on invoices and reports. If you click on the document icon here, you can get a preview of all your abbreviations that are available. So for example, if I see this as a reminder and I type in and then I hit the sync button, it will change my abbreviation into the phrase that I've chosen. Alternatively, you can just simply hit the spacebar and again it will do the same thing for you. So the save and new button will activate the timer if you have selected to start timer and the save and duplicate button will save the time entry and start the time I've selected while also auto populating all the same above time entry field selections as we've just created so that you can go ahead and save time in creating a similar entry. Once the time entry has been created, you can see that it will be listed below here. You can start and stop the timer as many times as you wish. And you can hover over the document icon and you will be able to view a list of all the time entry details. Next up, you can edit the time entry. This will pull all the details back up into these fields above and you can edit whatever fields you need and click update. If you click on the copy link, it, it will copy and paste the time entry details into the above fields again for a similar entry. Or you can click on the arrow and delete the time entry if needed. If your firm has a time entry approval process in place, please refer to our help article and video concerning how to submit a time entry for approval. Thank you.